let's talk about vitamin D deficiency and what it's connected to. So vitamin D deficiency and what it can actually cause. So these are, this is not all the things that vitamin D deficiency can cause, but I wanted to just highlight a few things here tonight. One is high blood pressure. We know that low vitamin D can create high blood pressure. This is actually one of the reasons why African Americans have greater risk of cardiovascular disease is that their skin is darker, the pigment in their skin is darker, it's harder for them to make vitamin D, they have to get a lot more sunshine exposure to make the same amount of vitamin D as a Caucasian, and so they have a higher risk of v blood pressure issues as a result of lower levels of vitamin D, that's one of the risks. Also though, vitamin D deficiency can cause elevations in blood sugar, it can cause tendencies toward obesity, okay, it can cause bone loss, muscle pain, systemic inflammation, as well as an autoimmune predisposition. Remember that vitamin D is an immune regulating nutrient. So it helps your immune system understand how to behave. And so notice these top three here, they're start as well, right? And so what do they say? They say comorbidities linked to worse COVID outcomes. So let's back up for a minute. These things, cause vitamin D deficiency. Sun avoidance, sunscreen aggressively, prescription steroid use and, and other medications are common medical advice, if you will, that we know cause vitamin D deficiency. Now, so we got big points of common medical advice that lead to massive levels of vitamin D deficiency. It's, it's, vitamin D is, is arguably it's one of the top deficiencies in industrialized countries today hands down, bar none, one of the top. Now, so that's medical interventions leading to vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency leads to high blood pressure, high blood sugar, overweight status, among other things. These three factors right here, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and overweight status, are some of the top comorbidities that contribute to worse outcomes in people with COVID-19. So, who suffers the worst with COVID-19? who dies, who has worse outcomes. These three categories. That and if you're over 80. So especially if you're over 80 and you have any of these three problems, those are the high risk categories of people, right? So we have, again, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, overweight status, worse outcomes. Now these three things can all be caused by vitamin D deficiency, your age, Sorry, sorry, folks, you can't control your age by taking vitamin D. Um, you can live healthier, but you can't control your age. So these three are adjustable factors, right? These are things that we know we can adjust, we can change. We can eat better, we can exercise, we can get better sleep. We can, we can do things that will improve upon these three situations. One of the things that we can do is make sure our vitamin D levels are normal, okay? Now again, a big part of the dogmatic belief of medicine is that you avoid the sun, you need to lather up with sunscreens that are, you know, most of them are carcinogenic. Um, steroids for immune suppression, steroids for pain are commonly prescribed. But then the average adult over the age of 60 is on five or more medications. So this is, again, this is standard. This is standard what medicine believes. They would, most doctors would tell you that vitamin D has no business in medicine and that vitamin D is a relatively unimportant nutrient. And that's why I, I really think it's important for you to understand the same people that are telling you to wear masks, to wash your hands, but aren't mentioning, you know, vitamin D, aren't mentioning things like zinc or vitamin C or quercetin or N-acetylcysteine or other known nutrients to support strongly your immune function are giving you advice that's counterintuitive. And, and back in March when I was talking with you, I was telling you, you need to know what your vitamin D status is and you need to make sure you're taking enough vitamin D if it's low to get that status corrected because we've got over 50 years of research that shows that vitamin D is a very, very powerful agent for your immune system to be able to fight off any kind of infection, bacterial, fungal, viral, etc. Years of data on this, but now today, Here's what we have. We actually have data, you know, before we couldn't make claims about COVID without the FTC trying to threaten to sue everyone who was a doctor who believed in nutrition. Uh, today, we actually have research trials and studies that have come out. So let's kind of go through a few of these. Here's one. 
scientific report. This was actually published in the journal Nature, which is arguably one of the most scientifically uh, prestigious medical journals there, there are. So you can see here, analysis of vitamin D level among asymptomatic and critically ill COVID-19 patients and its correlation with inflammatory markers. What these guys did is they, they took people um, with COVID and they measured their vitamin D, but they also measured serum inflammatory markers. And here's what they found, kind of in general summary. Serum levels of inflammatory markers were found to be higher in vitamin D deficient COVID-19 patients, meaning that people with vitamin D deficiency had higher levels of inflammation, okay? The fatality rate was high in vitamin D deficient. 21, look at the numbers here, 21% versus 3.1%. So an 18% difference in fatality rate amongst people with COVID. So vitamin D level is markedly low in severe COVID-19 patients. Inflammatory response is high in vitamin D COVID-19 patients. What this translates to is increased mortality or death in vitamin D deficient COVID-19 patients. As per the flexible approach in the current COVID-19 pandemic, authors recommend mass administration of vitamin D supplements to population at risk for COVID-19. Now, here's what we've had. Instead of common sense, instead of using this type of information, this is what makes me so angry. Instead of saying, let's, let's give people vitamin D because the research actually shows that low levels of vitamin D plus COVID will make you more inflamed and increase your risk of dying. And it's not just COVID, by the way, it's, it's other viral infectious diseases, other colds, other things like influenza. It's the same holds true with vitamin D in those conditions. So again, you can apply this whether you're scared of COVID or whether you think COVID is a hoax. I don't care what your thoughts are on COVID. I want you to know you can apply the same information to any viral infection, to any cold or flu, and the outcomes are going to be sustainably the same. So this study was just recently published. Now, then we also have a slew of other studies that have now been recently published that kind of clarify it as well. You can see here, vitamin D insufficiency may account for almost 9 of 10 COVID-19 deaths. That means almost 90% of people that have actually died from COVID, these authors believe that it, it, a vitamin D deficiency plays a role in that. And so here's what they're saying. They're actually accumulating all the studies and all the research that's been done to date on SARS-CoV-2 and vitamin D. And they're saying evidence from observational studies is accumulating, suggesting that the majority of deaths due to SARS-CoV-2 infections are statistically attributable to vitamin D insufficiency and could potentially be prevented by vitamin D supplementation. Again, think about that for a minute. I was called a heretic and I was told that I was being irresponsible and recommending lethal doses because I was recommending vitamin D. And, and, and so now the science, again, the science doesn't lie. The real science, I should say, doesn't lie. These people are actually in the trenches doing research on people that are sick in hospital beds with COVID. Here's another research study recently published. You can see our study demonstrates an association between vitamin D deficiency and severity and mortality of COVID-19, highlighting the need for interventional studies on vitamin D supplementation in SARS-CoV-2 affected individuals. And so then we have, so we have that study that was published and then we have this other one here on vitamin D um, deficiency and outcome of COVID-19 patients. And so you can see here, our study demonstrates an association between vitamin D deficiency, severity, and mortality of COVID-19, highlighting the need uh, for more research. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.